Uh, well, just one last question uh, to you all. We'll do that and then we can take any, field any questions from uh, the attendees. Uh, what toll do you think the current situation will have in the global space industry in the long term? How do you reckon the recovery period will go if, if the outbreak ends tomorrow, for example? Shall I start? Yeah, yeah. please. Okay, so um, straight away. Um, so first of all, very obvious, in the space industry, where there's tons of events and lots of travel, that will change. Um, we have already heard that a number of organizations will um, cut travel budgets significantly. Uh, and so um, I personally expect also a downsizing in the number of events. We have seen an inflation of space-related events over the last couple of years. Um, so I think that will be a, a, a sort of a consolidation here. Uh, another thing is with regards to the business itself, for the time being, interestingly, compared to many other industries, and that has also been reflected by a number of publications and articles, um, the space industry is yet doing fairly okay, isn't it? So things are moving ahead, et cetera. And that is also to some extent because space by most governments is being considered strategic, right? So um, I think that is one of the last things that will, uh, that will touch. However, looking at the global impact and, the, uh, uh, and we will we'll only see the, the, uh, the effects uh, a couple of months down the road. Uh, I personally uh, would expect uh, also cuts on the space budget on the government side what what the impact is going to be on the on the commercial end um we, we will see i mean uh, some some streaming services and these type of things so satellite based uh, satellite uh, downstream application ict business may grow whereas some of the core businesses uh, may probably see a consolidation um i think for now okay and in midterm uh, near term now and near term okay mid to long term there will be changes and uh, the business will certainly become more difficult. That's for, that's for sure. And, uh, and what, we already, what we see, and I personally see the, the trend will continue, we saw already before the uh, pandemic uh, um, a growing bubble in the new space uh, arena. Um, I, I, again, I'm optimistic, so I don't want to paint a bad picture here, but uh, we saw sort of a, a new space a bubble and uh, now we have also old space and other space related businesses uh, which will face some trouble in the future so uh, there will be some some insolvencies which not in uh, and more which will not necessarily mean that all those businesses go out of business uh, but there may be some uh, takeovers and and, 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 and m a activities taking place kind of sort of a down a streamlining of the script that's my personal personal outlook thank you I'd, I'd like to add just to, uh, to York's point that I think um, once the kind of the pandemic is, is managed as much as it can be, I think there'll have to be a sector to get behind something to you can really believe in. And I really think that space is that. I think it's, it's something that can really unite nations, whatever, globally and, and definitely on a local level. So it's, it's a really kind of blossoming, exciting, amazing thing to want to be doing. I mean, look what happened with the, with the moon landing in America. Everyone aligned, right? So I'm, 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 I would expect for that to be um, what will happen, especially in the UK, I'd hope that, um, and definitely in Scotland, is that it will be something that can be a positive message that can start to get people together and, and, uh, and achieve brand new innovation. And I'm actually hopeful that the, um, the lockdown may have provided some innovation we weren't expecting because people had to change how they're working and maybe um, approach, situa approach their kind of business is different, so it might, might have inadvertently created something we don't even know about just yet. So I think it's, uh, it'll, it'll, it'll be, I can see that being a growth area because of that, having something that is, that is exciting, that, that, um, that can be very visionary, that can be very, um, yeah, get everyone, get everyone excited for it, really. I think that's a great point. Um, I think my concern, and I know many of you have heard me bang on about this in the past, is that um, in the space industry, I think there's still a disconnect between um, how amazing the technology is and how great it is for, for life on Earth, but there's a disconnect between that and the general public. And I think even now, even more so, we need to be, all of us, anybody that's watching this now, do a much better job in telling your story, telling what your technology can do to help. Because I think there's going to be a bit of a filter on a lot of industry going forward on doing good. Um, 
And I think for the space industry, we, we know we're doing, I mean, there's amazing things out there, but we have to do a better job at telling what that is. I was on another call earlier where somebody was telling all these amazing technologies that are helping with COVID and isn't that great? I didn't even know these things and I'm in the industry. Is it how is somebody, you know, so if we're looking for public support and we're looking for people to really get excited about space and back space, then they need to know why. And it can't just be, you know, making fun of Elon and, and maybe going out to see, you know, Starlink and then having a debate on Instagram about if it's a good thing or not. Like we need to start doing, telling, you know, especially stuff that Sky Roar has been doing during the during the pandemic, but also, you know, Gunhilly has been and Virgin have been. So it's starting to just tell those st stories a bit better so that because there are going to be a lot of space programs are still publicly funded and there's going to be less of that. And I know, you know, what we went through with our funding down here for Spaceport Cornwall, and I know what Scotland's going to be going through with their planning permission up there. You know, public support is, is huge and it could potentially be an issue if they don't understand why we need satellites and what satellites are doing or what space technology can be doing back here on Earth. So I think that filter is going to get even, even more so. So I think, uh, I think you're totally right, Christina, but I also think that we still have to do a really good job at, at telling the public in a, in a more digestible way about what, what the industry is doing and why they should be backing it. Because I, I, I do worry you know, with, with some of the entrepreneurs out there that are in space getting a bit of a bad name over this pandemic is that there might be a, that, that vanity project type argument that we've seen a lot down here in Cornwall. And um, yeah, so that's my plea to all of you and, and the industry is to get out there and really push your message and push that, that, that message about doing, doing it for good. I fully agree. Um, I fully agree. Um, Can I, uh... yeah, go, sorry. Can I quickly touch on that? So, I mean, this is the core of what we do. I mean, uh, Space Iceland doesn't really, we, we sort of embed ourselves in, in projects, but we do not run a lot of projects. We help and we service the industry and we talk to the politicians. So we've, um, I mean, one of the things that we are facing is that you have a country of 370,000 people and a fair question is, how are we going to contribute to space and why should we? And another question that we get quite frequently is obviously, I mean, there are so many problems to solve here on Earth. Why would we be thinking about space? So, I mean, we've been forced to answer that. Well, space science and exploration is about understanding the, uh, the planet we live on. And we've, uh, been, we've been very sort of active in identifying some of the benefits that Iceland reaps from satellite imagery, like uh, following volcanic eruptions, which are um, surprisingly frequent in this country. And, um, and so that is sort of the conversation that we have. We've also, as a strategy, uh, as we aim to be, uh, the, I mean, I would say the most cooperative uh, space aspirational nation that you can find. I mean, we are radically open and transparent when it comes to what we're doing and, and, and we, pull people in if they even if they on the face of it only have like a slight connection to space and in a year we we managed to open partnership all over the world because of that approach uh when we speak to parliament we make sure to differentiate ourselves as an industry that does care about society quite a lot so when uh, we recently published a parliamentary review on on uh, the stimulus packets where we not only talked about our direct interest but we also spoke about some social projects and we we emphasized that as an industry we benefit greatly from social projects that allow people or children in particular to aspire to work in the industry uh, without having sort of the the financial status of the parents as the main uh, uh, main factor. Uh, so that has been one of our approaches. Uh, we do work very hard on showing people how we relate to their daily life and and we take it to heart. It's not just a story that we're telling. We, we also uh, as a group and as, a, as an industry here because it is developing, we are Many of us are people, young people that have had to, that have, been, have sort of reaped the benefit of how good Iceland is to educate people to have opportunities. But actually, one of the weaknesses that we have as a country is that we're not 
necessarily as good at, at providing those, those opportunities. So we have people moving all over the world um, and, and sort of seeking opportunities. So our way has been to really try to align ourselves with uh, our legacy. Uh, the friends came here and launched um, some rockets in the 70s. Uh, all the, the Apollo astronauts trained here. We have people coming over all, all the time. We had a Mars uh, um, rover tested here last summer. So we tried to link with that. And that, that's obviously the upstream, but then we also speak quite heavily on the downstream portion of the space industry. And I think, uh, I mean, more, with COVID, the fear is, or, or was originally, that private investment would dry up. But, but hopefully we can get governments to kind of pick up the slack a bit because private investment has been the driving force for the last, I would say, maybe 10 years, in at least the new space sector. Um, so that's, that's been quite important. But we also, what we speak of, uh, and the main goal for us and the main thing because we're such a new nation with this aspiration are the the opportunities the the opportunity that the, this industry offers uh startups and and people that are looking into things i mean it is it's absolutely astounding how cooperative this industry is and you can you can literally have an idea uh come to our office and within weeks we have uh got a positive feedback from from companies and organizations from all over the world to just share information and i and i think that is absolutely the strength of industry this industry and we need to be very good at uh explaining that there are huge amount of opportunities and it's embedded in the industry to work together sorry thor i'm gonna have to jump in here uh, we're coming to the end and I just want to, so I'll apologise to Robin, I know he probably wanted to jump in there, but we're running low on time. So I would just like to, first of all, thank Christina from the University of Edinburgh, Thor from Space Iceland, Melissa from Spaceport Cornwall, George from, I will get this right, GKIC, and Robin from Sky Rota. Uh, thank you very much for attending and speaking on our behalf today. Uh, we've had to cut short the Q&A due to the technical difficulties in that regard, but Thank you very much and um, we will have another topic next week which we'll advertise up online through our social media again at the end of this call there will be a survey that will top up so please leave any notes there so we can sort of make, try and make this better experience for everyone and we can see how it can go next time but overall thank you very much for tuning in and i hope everyone had a good day thanks very much thanks for thank you thank thanks you everyone. Everyone. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.